your other shift duties. We'll begin with your second shift duty, greeting and serving guests. Good evening. Fine enough to eat today? Boy, I'll say. Well, that's great. Would you care for some ham or beef? A little both, I think. All right. Making friendly conversations like this is a big part of greeting and serving guests. At other buffet-style restaurants, guests often feel they're on their own. Once they've paid for the meal, no one pays much attention to them. At Old Country Buffet, we work hard to make sure our guests never feel that way. As a carver, you spend a little more time with guests and other team members. That means you have a great chance to make them feel welcome and appreciated. By greeting the guest warmly and holding brief conversations as you serve them, you say to our guests, we're glad you're here. Let's take a closer look at greeting guests. Every conversation you hold with a guest should begin something like this. Good evening. Or, Hi, how are you? Once you've greeted the guest, start a brief conversation. Try asking a question the guest can answer in a sentence or two. You might ask something like this. Is it still hot out there? Or this. Did you catch a game last night? Or this. Have you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. Don't forget to hold quick conversations with our younger guests, too. Children often play a big part in deciding which restaurant their parents visit. We want them to feel welcome and special here, too. So start conversations with children by saying something like this. What grade are you in at school? Or this. Have you decided what dessert you're going to have? Or this. Do you like hot fudge sundaes? Once you've held a brief conversation, it's time to move on to the second half of this shift duty, serving the guests. Begin by asking, Would you care for some ham or beef? Ham, please. Once guests have chosen what meat they want, you'll carve a slice of it. Exactly what size of slice you'll serve will be a judgment call on your part, unless the guest makes a special request. We don't limit the cook can have. We do, however, manage it to reduce waste. Here are some guidelines for knowing how much meat to serve a guest. When your guest's plate has very little on it, carve a full cut. Lay it over the bare portion of the plate. Children usually prefer smaller portions. Carve them a smaller cut. Place it on an open section of the plate. If your guest's plate looks like this, a quarter cut or a half cut of the meat the guest requests. Sometimes, guests will tell you exactly what size of cut or number of pieces they want. Other guests will ask you to carve a slight thicker than our usual dime width. These guests all feel they're getting more when getting a thicker cut. Actually, the thin cut ensures them a tender piece of meat, which is why we carve dime thicknesses. If a guest asks you, I like a half inch slice of that roast beef, please. Say something like this. I'd be glad to carve you that. Thinner slices are more tender, though. Would that be all right? You can always come back up for more. OK. Of course, if the guest insists on a thicker slice, honor the request. No matter what the topic of your conversation has been or what size slice you've served, you will end each guest contact with the same phrase. How's that for you? That's fine, thanks. Asking. How's that makes sure guests are happy with the slice they received. If they are not, or if they also want a slice of a different meat, you can correct the situation promptly. Guests will sometimes ask you questions about the food we serve and how we prepare it. To be ready for these questions, make the most of opportunities to learn about our menu items. If you are asked a question you can't answer, find someone who can answer it. The nearest manager is usually a good place to start. Your third shift duty is maintaining the carving station. As you carve and serve meats, your station quickly loses the cleanliness and appeal it had when the restaurant opened. Throughout your shift, you'll complete routine cleaning and maintenance tasks to return your station to its original appearance. Here are some of the tasks you'll complete. Wipe grease from the carving board with a paper towel. Grease and meat scraps spoil the appearance of your station. Wipe them away frequently. Discard the used paper towels in the wastebasket immediately. Keep the wastebasket in a spot that is... Then, wipe the carving board, front board, and stainless steel surfaces 
with a clean, sanitized towel. And between groups of guests to wipe your carving knives and chef's forks with your clean, sanitized towel. Keep an eye on the walls, mirrors, sneeze guards, and floors around your station to make sure they stay clean. If they aren't, use the time between guests to clean them. Floor spills immediately by guarding the area personally or putting up a wet floor sign until the spill can be cleaned up, damp mopping the area with hot, soapy water, and leaving the wet floor sign in place until the area is completely dry. Be sure to wash your hands after performing every cleaning task. Rinse out your towels frequently in sanitizing solution. Towels that aren't sanitized frequently not only are unappetizing to look at, but they also leave streaks on the stainless steel. Maintaining the carving station includes maintaining carving knives. To keep your knives sharp and ready to carve, you use a grooved steel rod called, appropriately, the steel doesn't actually sharpen the knife. It hones it by aligning microscopic burrs on the edge of the blade. After cutting about 10 to 15 slices of meat, you will notice that your knife isn't cutting as easily as it was when it was first sharpened. It's then that you'll use the steel to restore the knife's edge. Here's how to use the steel. Note that the process is described for right-handed carvers. If you are left-handed, Reverse the process. Before you start, put a carver's protective glove on each hand. Hold the steel in your left hand. Hold the steel so the point is up. You will keep the steel's tip up throughout this process. Hold the knife in your right hand. Place the blade of the knife at the base of the steel on the side furthest from you. The cutting edge should be facing up. The blade up the steel working left to right. Make sure the entire blade is drawn across the steel. Next, blade of the knife at the tip of the steel on the side closest to you. Again, the cutting edge should face up. Draw the blade down left to right. This hones the other side of the blade's cutting edge. Repeat this process several times on each side of the cutting edge. Draw the blade over the clean, sanitized towel lying on the carving counter. Do not hold the towel in your left hand. Your carving knives are sharp enough to slice not only through the towel, but all fingers. Remember, knives are never taken to the dish room for cleaning. Once you have wiped the seal with your clean, sanitized towel, return it to its appropriate place. Your fourth shift duty is assisting when the guest flow is light. When there are no guests at your station and you're caught up on your own tasks, you'll assist line attendants. Your final shift duty is doing whatever it takes to take care of the guests. At Old Country Buffet, serving guests is our number one priority. You have many opportunities throughout your shift to lend a helping hand to our guests. Every time you offer that helping hand, chances are you increase guest's satisfaction with his or her visit. Before we leave your shift duties, let's take a minute or two to look closely at something you need to be aware of every minute you're on the job. Safety. As a carver, you work in an area with a high potential for accidents, sharp knives, grease from the hand, and the rush of a busy shift can sometimes combine to create a disaster. That's why you need to always work safely. Here are a few things to keep in mind. Treat your knives with respect. They are razor sharp, honed to an edge that cuts through meat with only a little pressure. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter to the knife if it's cutting through a ham or your finger. Don't grab for a falling knife. Let it hit the floor. In your haste to prevent it from falling, you stand a 50-50 chance of grabbing the blade, not the handle. Take extra time and care when you're washing knives. When both your hands and the knives are wet, it's easy to slip if you're hurrying. Slow down and complete the job safely. Never place knives in bus tubs, Lexans, or sinks full of soapy water. Use only sharp knives. Believe it or not, 
Dull knives are more dangerous than sharp knives. Because you have to work harder to get a dull knife to cut, the chances of cutting yourself or a guest are much greater. Finally, be aware at all times of where the guest's hands are. Without realizing it, guests may move their hands in the path of your knife. Keep an eye out for this hotel. In this video, we've examined your shift duties other than carving meat. Your shift duties are the things you will spend the majority of your time doing. Once again, here are the shift duties we've examined in this video segment. Greeting and serving guests. Maintaining the carving station. Assisting live.